I'm Kevin Harnett. Coming up next, it's Secrets of Louisville Chefs from Bourbon Barrel Foods and Kitchen Studio. You gotta always add a little love for the food. Here's a secret. We're about to reveal the secrets from one of Louisville's favorite restaurants, Martini Italian Bistro. Head chef Alan Hubbard is joining us. Nice and smooth. And he's brought lots of good eats. We'll learn how to make a simple Italian relish that has dozens of different uses, plus linguine and mussels marinara. This is a quick, easy dish. You don't want to miss this. It's easy to do yourself when you learn Chef Allen's secrets. Hey, baby, no problem. This is how I do it. And he's about to reveal them in front of a live studio audience next on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Chefs, I'm Kevin Harnon. We're at Bourbon Barrel Foods. This is the home of the show that takes you into the kitchens and into the minds of Louisville's favorite chefs so we can make the same great food at home. Coming up on the show, you're about to hear from Alan Hubbard. He's ready to reveal a lot of secrets from his kitchen at Martini Italian Bistro. Before we get started, we have Tim Laird, the co-host. You're going to come on. Are you Huckleberry Finn. I thought I had to have a martini because, again, from uh, Martini Italian Bistro, and of course, uh, Alan Hubbard is one of our favorite chefs. He is incredible, and uh, I, I can't wait to get into all this food. Well, I don't think you're alone. I think our studio audience yep. is ready, too. Right, they are. What a great audience, too. All right. All right, everybody. It's a great day to be in Kitchen Studio, and I'm excited because we have the one and the only smooth operator. In fact, that's on his uh, license plate. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> here he is, Alan Hubbard. <laughs> oh. How are you, Chef? Well, doing well. How are you, Tim? Good, buddy. Thanks good, for buddy. Me. And, for and me. you are. You are the smooth. I'm I, I like you. Nice and smooth, man. <laughs> nice and smooth. <laughs> That's the way you yeah, do yeah, things. Yeah, That's yeah, the way yeah, you roll. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, and I just love what you do at uh, uh, Martini Italian Bistro. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And you really take care of everybody, and even right. special requests. That's, that's what I love that's, about that's it. That's our specialty. You know what I'm saying? We love our people. Our guests, you come to our place, we love you. Our guests say, well, Chef, I don't want this pasta. I want that pasta. No problem. I don't want this veg, I want no problem. As long as you come in, that's our last. Just come in, <laughs> we'll take care of the rest. You know what I'm saying? Because we're nothing without you. We really appreciate it. Chef, what are we going to uh, cook today? Uh, today, what we're going to do is I'm doing a little simple uh, Mediterranean relish. Uh, it's just a little simple thing. It's got different applications. I'm going to show you a way what we're going to do today. We're going to do it on little toast rounds, and also I'm going to do a chicken dish with it. I try to make something that's nice and quick and easy, and something you can easily prepare at home. Excellent. So I'm just going to throw right. a little olive oil in here. Kind of get get the skillet that's, going. That looks good. It's a little marinated uh, olive oil. Yes, we've got a here a little rosemary, a little sun-dried tomatoes, you know what I'm saying? Give it a little flavor. And then for the relish what we have here, we got a little Roma tomatoes. There you go. And wow. We have, this is something really quickly, little cucumbers. And like this is something also, like you say with well, Chef, I don't like the cucumbers. You don't have to use it. You can mix up anything you like. That's the beauty of food. It's, it's all about what you like. A little Kalamata olives, one of my favorite olives. I, I, I do love, like Oh my Kalamata. God, they're so good. They are so good. You know what they go great with? A martini. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> yep, and then we got those red onions. That's the way I uh, eat my martinis, <laughs> is with olives. Yep, and then right here we got, of course, chopped garlic. Love that. There you go. Then just a little salt and pepper. There you go. And then this is just fresh basil, which we've chopped up. Okay, now our skillet should be look good and warm. Oh, and season the skillet. Oh, yeah, I always, I always, I call this my salt and pepper. I call it my love. You got to always add a little love to the food. And I like that. You you combine the salt and pepper all together. You don't have to go back and forth. Right, right. You know what we do? We, the way we measure it out is like uh, it's one quart uh, salt to like maybe half of uh, the pepper. You know, it's according to what you like though. These are just little chicken breasts. You just get them going. That's skinless, and I, I see you kind of uh, lightly pound it. This is a three ounce. Out to thin it out a little bit, and then yeah. help it cook faster it, it too. Cooks, I think that's it a cooks, great secret. It cooks quicker, and plus it also cooks evenly. Oh it, yeah, because otherwise you have the thicker part that uh, is, is usually right. It's, longer it's, longer it's like you've got to want to have it balanced because you have one side that's thicker than the other. This side is going to be like rare. This side is going to be like well. You want to kind of like to where everything kind of comes together. And then right here, I have just the steamed basmati. In the kitchen stadium, boom. There you go. Just want to let your chicken cook a little bit. 
while this is going. Then well, also, this is a multitasking tool. You use yeah. this for everything. From your uh, yeah. hands to grab right. this. This is like that. the extension of my arm. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> you like, you, know, you know, like you can make it work. You know, you want to just kind of get like a good little stir on it. Just you see how quickly that's cooking all around the edges there. Yeah. Starting yeah. to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it takes it takes no time at all. And then while this is going, we're going to add a little. I got a little white balsamic vinegar here. I love, you can drink this stuff. This stuff is awesome. A little sweet, which is what I like, just a little sweet, but it's really good. Yeah, it's more sweet than it is acidic, you know? Yes. It's balsamic, mm -hmm. uh, and I love it. Yeah, this is one of the relics. You come out to the restaurant, you'll see a lot of time, we run our, our special sometimes, you'll see a lot of time, you'll see a, a relish on the menu. Then also, we add just a little bit of sugar. Just a little bit. Just sugar. a little. Just, just a little. little. And just that's a, good. That, that'll wake everything up, and yep. uh, it's, especially the tomatoes, sweeten them up a little bit. Yeah. That's a great secret. You got a little extra virgin olive oil. And this, to me, is like the biggest secret of all. This right here, this white balsamic. This, you can, so many applications for this stuff. I'm just kind of, got some asparagus here. Just kind of let them warm up slightly. Mm -hmm. See, tick tack quick good. it is. Oh, no look time. at that. Oh, wow. oh, perfect. And you know what's nice about that is, you know, you put it in the pan, you left it there. You didn't start messing around. No, you want, to, you want to kind of let it sear. You want to, one of the things, you want to kind of let it sear. You see how you got the little crust right there? But they, they kind of like locks in the flavor. Locks in the flavor. That way everything kind of stays on the inside. All the juicy and all the juiciness makes it really, really good. And then you see how quickly it cooks, like boom, boom, boom. This is something you can have prepared at home. You can like steam your rice early in the day, throw it in the fridge. Asparagus, boom. When the kids get home, boom, boom, boom. Something quick, easy, and healthy. Oh, that's a great idea. This is quick and easy. Yeah. I'm going to show you different ways. This first way, we got a little oil. From the... you want to take... And you're right, that was the secret to this. The, the basmati rice was cooked ahead of time, just, yes. and you're just reheating it. Yes. And you blanched your, uh, looks like your asparagus, asparagus was yep. already blanched ahead of time. So, You see, like I said, this is a, a quick and easy dish. I just wanted to show you different ways what we can do with it. The thing about any great chef will tell you, one of the secrets that always chefs is, try to keep the food as simple as possible. You know what I'm saying? Most of the best chefs will always tell you, keep the food uh, its integrity, so to speak. You want to keep it close to its origin. You want chicken to taste like chicken. You don't want to eat chicken and you're thinking of something else. You know, you want to be like, oh man, this is awesome, you know? And that's the true Italian way. I mean, it always has been uh, very simple, fresh yeah. Uh, ingredients. Yeah, Italy is like, Italian is, is my love, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's the best food to me, you know, because everything, a lot of, it's like local. They always say, what's local? Local just means you just go down the street and get your food, you know what I'm saying? Now they say, well, it's a big fashion, a big fad. Like, well, we eat local, what's doing local? Well, it's been done for thousands of years. I'm going to do like that. And then we're going to nice. just take the, take the little relish. Oh, that good relish that's been marinating and all that. Yep. In the secret balsamic. Yes, sir. And a little sugar. And just a little bit. Just a little. I mean, it was, that wasn't even a pinch. No, just. What's one less than a pinch? Yeah, you want to do what half the sugar does. It brings out <laughs> maybe a quarter pinch. <laughs> we'll call it a quarter pinch. It brings out the natural sweetness. Look at that, how beautiful. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, and, the, the, look, yeah, and look at the color. colors, too. I love yeah. that. And then a lot of things, people first, they do, they eat with their eyes. First thing, it's how we choose a lot of things. We choose our mate, yeah, we choose our clothes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, there you go. And then this is one. Like, oh. Take the asparagus. And like here, and here nice. go another. This is another one of my favorites. This is what we have right at the restaurant. Okay. It's a chive oil. Don't think this is, it's just uh, fresh chives. We blend it with the uh, uh, extra virgin olive oil. Throw it in the food processor, pulse it until it mixes well. Chive oil, wow. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Oh, a little drizzle of that on yeah. there. Mm. It just kind of, kind of brightens, kind of brightens the plate up, and yeah. adds a lot of flavor. You know that. And then what? What the Italian would, would that be with a little parmesan? Oh, you gotta have the parmesan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. There you go. And you see this. This is dish number one. And then here go another way what we can do with the relish. Same relish. Oh yeah. Like same say, relish that you made. Same relish. Like say you have a little cocktail party. You want to mm -hmm. do something? Just do a little on top. On these little toast rounds. Yeah, the toast. This is basically just a French bread, a toasted off, throw a little extra virgin olive oil on it, a little Parmesan cheese. This is oh, I, I that really looks love. great, and you're gonna get the crunch, all that flavor of that uh, relish you have in there. Beautiful. And then of course, as always, just a little Parmesan. Yeah. Wow, that One, looks two. great. More secrets from Chef Alan Hubbard and Tim Laird's cocktail coming up on Secrets of Global Chefs. Kitchen studio.
studio. We're here with Chef Alan Hubbard from Martini Italian Bistro, where he's been cooking up some fine Italian eats. And now's the time of the show where one lucky studio audience member gets a chance to take a taste. Dan Hallahan is here. Nice to see you, Dan. Thank you. I look out in the audience, I see a number of familiar faces. Some of the fine folks from Louisville Magazine are here. That includes your lovely wife, the publisher Dan Crutcher here. This has been a great show. I hope they're enjoying it. And you're probably about to enjoy the show a little more than them because you get a chance to take a taste. I certainly am. All right, Dan, you're born and raised in Louisville, you've been over to Martini. I have, many, many times. <laughs> Alan's a wonderful chef, and uh, Martini's is one of our favorites, sir. And you were even talking, you know, he says, whatever you want, it's all about pleasing the customer. You were telling me in the commercial break, he's been out table side a time or two. He does visit to make sure that we're enjoying his, uh, the, our, our culinary experience. There, there you so. go. Well, he wants to know if you're going to enjoy this one today, so if you would, go ahead and take a taste of the Certainly fine well. relish that he made. Of course, he has the chicken, the asparagus, the rice, a lot of flavors on the plate. And the final determination for the people at home really comes down to you because it's not smell-o-vision. They can't taste it. <laughs> and the verdict is two thumbs up. Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Very nice. And thank you. I appreciate you being here. Tim, I think that's pretty uh, resounding. Oh, I'm yes. you, I, I could tell in Dan's face, that was a yeah, that was good. And, and you see he even dunked into that fig, uh, the chive oil a little yeah. bit in there. Yeah. Got it all uh, covered and delicious. So anyway, uh, definitely a winner from uh, Chef uh, Allen. But really, anyway. The only thing he said he needed next was something to wash it down with. <laughs> exactly. And, and he's leaving that up to you. And we just happen to have something. And I, I call this my huckleberry fin. Now, the fin is going to be the Finland. Landia Vodka. It's uh, a really nice, clean tasting, uh, wonderful vodka. So I'm going to start out and I'm going to make two of these. So it looks like I'm using a lot of vodka, but but it's for two cocktails now, Kevin. <laughs> if you weren't here, they would still be my cocktails. Like that. And then I've got this huckleberry syrup. I love this uh, 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 wonderful, uh, it, it's a different kind of berry. It's a wild berry, but it's very delicious. So it's, it's like a, uh, a kicked up blueberry, if you will, but it's really nice. So a little huckleberry syrup goes in. So uh, two parts of vodka to one part of my uh, huckleberry syrup, and that you goes in. All, all flavors of this syrup. I've yes, you can. Chips. I mean, that's what's great about it, and you can just mix it with about Mango. anything and everything. Oh, yeah. I even kick up my juleps. I like a huckleberry julep. You know, you make a, a, a base mint julep or whatever you want. Give this a good shake. And then... That's well, important. You talk about that often, Shaking, you, because yeah. you need to mix all the ingredients, but you also have to uh, dilute the alcohol a little bit with that ice. So that's a very important step to it. So that goes in. And then the huckleberry syrup, it's a very thick syrup and viscous. So uh, as you can see, we've already lightened it up with the vodka and right. uh, the dilution. But also I'm going to top this off with a little Corbel champagne because it's just the right thing to do. <laughs> you can't get enough stuff. I mean, until the glass overflows, we're pretty much open for That's whatever right. here. Anyway, but it gives us a nice little effervescence and uh, a little beautiful. bubble on top. Isn't that a gorgeous cocktail? I mean, beautiful, huh? How fun is that? Cheers, Kevin. Cheers. Let's see how we did. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's how good. about that? That is really good. You know what it tastes like? I do. Another. <laughs> Man. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm <laughs> Wow. Put some loving in that, just like uh, Chef Allen uh, yeah, taught me. Yeah, I think we may have replaced the salt and pepper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it. Chef Allen has some more love to he share. He does, he does. Anyway. Wow. Oh, wow. Back with Chef Allen Hubbard. How are you, Chef? Chef? Good, 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 good. You're doing great. You're always, doing, he's always doing good. Well, and Tim, you, he's been in your place before mixing yeah. up some fun. He's a great guy. You know what I'm Plus, wow. I like his drinks. Yeah. <laughs> he's awesome, 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 awesome. We always have fun. What's mm -hmm. the next dish we're cooking the, up? The, the next dish, what we're going to do, we're going to do a linguine with mussels. Uh, another simple dish. I try to keep the dishes very simple today. Something that you can easily reproduce at home. A lot of times, us chefs, we forget that we are chefs. And so when we're talking to a lot of people, they're like, Chef, we don't understand what the world are you saying, you know? So I try to make it very simple. This is uh, one of my favorites on the menu. It's just uh, linguine, mussels, uh, marinara, a little white wine, and of course, just top it off with a little, little Parmesan. So we want to get your skillet good and hot. We just got regular mussels here. We've got about maybe 16 mussels. We want to kind of get it good and hot. You want to skillet good and hot because of what it does. It allows the mussels get good and hot and pop right open. And they don't they don't take long to cook. I think a no. lot of times 
uh, most people will overcook the mussels and yeah. then they become tossing. Yeah, so the thing about mussels, any kind of crustacean, as soon as it pops open, she's ready. You know what I'm saying? They pop open, boom. You want to get this when it's nice and tender, it's like young. The more you cook it, the tougher it gets. You know what I'm saying? So you want to cut this it very lightly. And if they don't pop open, throw them away, right? Yeah, exactly, That's yeah. That's the sign that it was it's dead. You see how this one, like, you see them starting to open up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Alan, while that's cooking and opening up, we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to put the final touches on this. You'll sure. see the muscles along with the linguine. And we'll wrap up our show. You're watching Secrets of Little Chef with Chef Alan Hubbard from Martini Italian Bistro. We'll be right back. Secrets of Louisville Chefs. We're learning some of Louisville's great secrets from one of the best places in town. It's Martini's Italian Beef. Chef Alan Hubbard's still over the stove. And yeah. Chef, we, we're having a lot of fun today, right? <laughs> you know it. You know it. We've got little mussels going here. I just add a little garlic. And you see, once they start to open up a little bit, then I'm going to deglaze. Oh, yeah. I'm going to deglaze the pan with a little white wine. The white wine adds like a little sweetness, a little richness to it. And plus a little flavor. And you're making one of Tim's favorite oh, my dishes. Favorite. Yeah. I love this. And I'll tell you what's great about this. If you do this at home, you deglaze the pan, then you can deglaze yourself with a glass of wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is <Yeah>. a secret. <laughs> yeah, we throw a little wine there. And also, like, this is one of the things that we can do, one of the uh, different ways you can do mussels. Say you don't like the marinara, right? At this point, if you want to just throw some whole butter in here, it'd be awesome. Just Wild onion. <laughs> you know yeah. What there you go. A little marinara. <laughs> And then here's the linguine pasta. Ah. Uh. Mm. There you go. Oh, my God. And this is this. a classic Italian the, dish, of course. Yeah. The, uh... And this is one of the uh, good Italian because uh, the Italians, a lot of times, used to have like uh, big families. You know what I'm saying? People don't realize that Italy is on both sides. It's got the water. They say, well, the Italians don't eat the seafood. Italians are awesome. They have awesome seafood. Some of the best. And most of it's a good way to feed the family. It don't cost you a lot. And you can feed a lot of people. That's why they throw a little pasta in there. Because you have like maybe five, six kids to feed. Stretches it out. Yeah. Expensive. And then you know what I, I like about this too is, uh, like you say, you can do some things ahead of time. You kind of cook the pasta al dente. Yeah. Then it gets warmed back up in the pan yeah. with all those other juices yeah. and all the marinara. And yeah. It soaks up yeah. all the, that the goodness. You want to, yeah, it soaks up the flavor. Like you see, like right now, you see how the pasta looks kind of like bland and kind of white a little bit. But once you, the flavor, you'll see, start to see the sauce start to seep into the pasta. You want to kind of like soak up the sauce with the Ooh. pasta. You don't want it soupy. No. You want it kind of like you know, to where you can see the, you can look at the color of the pasta, you can see the sauce. And again, this does not take long at all. Look at all those, yeah. all the muscles are open. Oh, there you go. phenomenal. All right, chef, I think we're about ready for a plate up. Okay. There it is, and look at that. It's not soupy. Yeah. It's, I mean, it really, everything stuck you know, together and nice and thick. You see how quick, it, and plus it's a quick, easy dish. Something you can, you come home, you're tired, boom, 10 minutes, you're done. You know, you don't want to be in the kitchen all day after being at work all day. Right. You know what I'm saying? And otherwise, if you want to, come back Martins, I'll fix it for you. <laughs> yeah, here's the real secret. You had a busy day. <laughs> you know? Come Chef home. Al will prepare your meals for you. Yeah, yeah. It's like having a private chef. I kind of yeah. like that. How about that? That's, 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 that's why I tell everyone they come to the restaurant, like, you got your own personal chef. You, know? you can't take him home, though, right? I, Oh, I put, hey, for the right price, <laughs> for the right price, I'm on the road, baby. This is Just call me up. Yeah, call me up. Call me up. Call Everybody me up. Call me up. I sit at the restaurant. Yeah. Like, oh, well, yeah. I'm hungry. Well, let's get out of my with somebody. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, Kevin. Oh, a little parsley. Yeah, a little but, parsley. Yeah, and, a little uh, parsley. The parsley, but the parsley adds color and also adds flavor. Parsley is like a balancer. It kind of balances out the flavor. There he is. One yeah. of the best in town. Chef Alan Hubbard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate Chef Alan Hubbard for coming and sharing his secrets. Thanks to our studio audience for being here. We appreciate our sponsor, Cisco and Louisville, Universal Linens, the Beef Council, everybody who makes this production possible. And we appreciate you watching. We have more secrets on our website at newlocaltv.com. For Tim Laird, I'm Kevin Harnett, and on behalf of all of us at BMB Productions, have a great day and thanks for watching. See you.